All right, welcome everyone to the Ronan Institute Public Seminar this week. If you are new, a visitor, one of our external visitors, uh, Ronan Institute for Independent Scholarship is dedicated to supporting high quality scholarship by independent and non-traditional scholars and trying to work together to build a new model of how to do academia. Uh, if you have questions during the course of the talk, uh, you can put them in the chat function. Uh, that's probably the best way to do it. And our speaker will probably should, should be encouraged to ignore those during the talk itself, but it's a great way to sort of keep track of your questions um, so that he can address those at the end. So today's speaker is Keith Say. He has been a Ronan Institute research scholar for little over two years right now and is a very active community member functioning also as our community journalist. He keeps all of us up to date on what is going on with the news of the world related to academia and scholarship. Uh, his academic work is on languages and linguistics, particularly formal syntax in a Chomskyan framework. Today he is going to talk about the history of linguistics and the development of biolinguistics and Let's see. If you're interested in learning more about Keith or how to reach out to him, you can find him on our website here. And in general, if you're interested in more things about the Ronan Institute, come check out the website. Many of our seminars are posted to our YouTube channel there. Our next public seminar will probably be early 2021. And you can also reach out for information to our seminars address at seminars at roaninstitute.org. So thank you everyone for coming. And I am going to stop sharing my screen now and hand it over to Keith so he can share his. And Keith, take it away. Right. Um, thank you very much. Thank you very much to, um, to John for that uh, intro. I'm trying to find um, the right slide. Yeah, so can you see um, everything? Uh, is everything clear? And uh, Yeah? Is everything? Thank you very much. And thank you. Yeah, so before I begin, I'd like to acknowledge um, you numerous people for this. Is that... Um, um, I'd, like to, um, I'd like to thank uh, numerous people um, for this. Uh, um, first of all, to uh, John for um, inviting me to uh, join the Ron Institute. To that, you know, back in July of 2018, and for everything that he's done for me since, like funding, etc. To Arika and to Alex, you know, for organizing this and for advertising, so you know the entire world um, knows about it. Uh, I want to thank you to my uh, mentors and uh, supervisors, and uh, you know, in um, um, linguistics. So, um, I'm especially Professor um, Nigel um, Vincent, Professor Ian um, Roberts at the University of um, Cambridge. You know, I just saw that on the um, list that you know he may be here right now. So you know, if he's here, I'd like to say a big thank you to him and for all that he's done um, for me. At York, which is where I'm at at the moment, um, George Sulas, Pino um, um, Longobardi, and um, um, Peter Sells. You know, this piece of work is a heavily um, indebted to the works and formal um, parameters by Professor Roberts, Longobardi, and um, Van Helderen. And of course, you know, the great um, Noam um, Chomsky, whom I've um, um, communicated um, several times. So uh, before I um, um, begin, I'd like to um, I'm, I'm express you know, my thanks and gratitude to everyone here, and you all in error. Just remain my own, of course. Let's see, I'm just in the chat. Yeah. Right, I mean, uh, before I begin, however, yeah, um, I'd like to, you know, I'm proposing a structure and um, a roadmap because um, when I was I'm writing this, you know, I'm, I um, realized that this is, um, this is um, a bit tricky. I think that I haven't done that before then. You know, there's a public seminar for both specialists and sort of non specialists in um, linguistics. Uh, so, um, uh, um, I guess um, um, everyone here probably has has a different background, also have, may have a different um, impression of um, a linguistics. So I think the first step um, that I want to do is um, is to introduce um, what um, the linguistics is. So you know um, its history and its nature, etc. Just to get everyone you know on the same page. Um, those of you who know a linguistics um, or already, and I, I'm, you can probably um, switch off and uh, you know, switch on when uh, whilst I go into the um, the um, 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 latter parts. My second step, however, is introduce something in you know, the 
more specific, and known as you know, bio um, linguistics, you know, the study of human languages in relation to other types of uh, languages. I mean, uh, believe it or or not, you know, there are actually you know, many other types of you know, non-human um, languages, like you know, machine learning, animal um, languages, um, primates, etc. That you know, I do have colleagues who you know who work on these things. I unfortunately I don't work on these things. I focus on you know human, you know, natural um, languages. Um, but you know, um, I think um, it's uh, it's probably useful to situate you know bio um, linguistics in relation to other types of languages as well. And um, the third point is the main sort of your know, thrust of my talk today, and which is you know, I'm, I'm going to um, propose something that is really quite central in Chomsky um, schools of. Um, linguistics, and then you know what is formal um, simplicity, and all of this will become clear as I um, I'm go along. But um, you know, these are the three goals I want to address um, today. My aims, however, is that you know um, with uh, with uh, in relation to uh, to the first one is to uh, introduce you know um, linguistics to you and to how it's developed as, um, as an academic um, discipline. I think this may be you know, quite useful for those in our audience who aren't um, linguists. Um, secondly, you know, the nature of human language and its cognitive um, foundations, as we'll see um, later on, Chomsky, you know, he's proposed that, you know, language, the human language is a cognitive um, phenomenon that is um, inherent and intrinsic to our um, biological um, makeup. So, you know, it's important that, you know, we think of language as a cognitive um, ability. That's another thing, yeah. And the second, and the second thing is, uh, we should um, think about, you know, um, some of the old and new uh, perspectives of um, derivational um, simplicity. Yeah, I think you know, Arika is. Uh, um, remind me, so I, I should probably go into you know, a presentation, but that would be a little bit better. Just bear with me. Yeah. So if I just go through these things again. Yeah, because um, as we'll see, you know, the, uh, the definitions of a uh, derivational um, simplicity, you know, have been defined in different ways, and uh, it's not always easy um, to work out which is better. So I think you have some new and old definition that should be so you um, discussed um, together. Right? Okay, if I just do, I'm sorry, everything here. Right. So first of all, you know, I'm I'm a linguistic. You know, I'm I'm, I'm a, what is it? Is, you know, um, I did a search um, last night, you know, on, you know, on um, um, linguistics and, you know, um, they all come up with something like, you know, the scientific study of, you know, language and structure, including, you know, the study of uh, morphology, syntax, phonetics, semantics, pragmatic, etc. Uh, you know, these definitions were given by, you know, um, numerous um, 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 institutes like uh, Wikipedia, the Oxford um, English and Dictionary, Cambridge, LSA, Britannica, um, etc. Um, I suppose you know, the one common factor is that you know um, la um, linguistics is a scientific study of language, but you know, that's also a very vague um, definition because you know um, what does scientific study mean? So um, I suppose you know, um, our first step towards understanding um, um, linguistics is to go back to its roots and to see um, you know how um, it's been um, developed. Um, linguistics has its roots in the nineteenth um, century. You know that makes it um, um, a relatively young sort of you know um, scientific and academic um, discipline because so things like physics or you know chemistry and biology so go um, you know, go go back to ancient times. Uh, linguistics really have uh, you know has uh, um, has its origins you know um, relatively um, um, recently. Um, a group of uh, you know, neo grammarians who will notice you know, some um, 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 irregularities in the sound um, correspondences between the sort of, you know IE in the European um, languages. Uh, I'm not sure whether you know John Paulus is here, but John Paulus, you know, my fellow uh, Ronan um, colleague, you know, he's a classicist, and I also you know, I've studied um, classics when I was you know an undergrad at Oxford. You know, so you know, I had to study Latin and Greek, but I also had to study you know, several other you know um sort of IE in the European um, languages like Sanskrit and Hittite, etc. Um, the story goes was that uh, you know people notice some um, phonological um patterns between these um, um, languages. And so what they did was you know, they tried to um, reconstruct the um, proto-language of all of these you know, um, um, European and Indic um, um, languages, and also to trace the evolution of sounds from uh, PIE to the various IE um, languages. Okay, so, so this is the first endeavor um, that, um, that people tried um, which um, which um, signaled the uh, beginnings of um, um, linguistics. Uh, 
Oops, sorry, I'm going to get my slides computer. Right, so, you know, I'm a very famous um, um, example that, you know, um, classical um, philologists um, have used. You know, if we are comparing, you know, some of these are cognate words between Latin, Greek, Sanskrit, and Gothic, Gothic being you know, the earliest um, Germanic um, language. Uh, you know, Germanic um, languages include, you know, modern German, but also modern English. So, you know, we may see, you know, some um, um, similarities here. But, you know, the word for um, father in all of these are related um, languages, Latin pater, Greek pater, Sanskrit pita, Gothic um, um, father, um, etc. You know, if we just some look at them, you know, we see some patterns, you know? we see that, you know, they're obviously um, similar. The word for three, number three, that's in tres, Greek tres, Sanskrit and trias, and Gothic tres, etc. Um, the word for brother, frate, frate, brate, and, and um, brother, um, etc. Right, okay, so um, um, you can see the, you know, the Germanic um, um, examples are clearly um, are similar to English, you know, so English, father, three, brother, which has set them apart from you know, the um, other three um, uh, branches. Um, and then your know, people, you know, they've been trying to you know, form some sort of, you know, sound and um, correspondences between your know, Latin, Greek, Sanskrit, and Gothic, etc. So, for example, you know, Latin P, Greek P, Sanskrit P, correspond to Gothic F, um, as you've seen in the um, in in the words for um, um, a father. Um, Latin F R, Greek P H R, Sanskrit B H R, and Gothic B R, etc. Okay, so you know, we would um, reconstruct two our uh, folk. Teams here. So, you know, I'm, I'm pro to um, Indo, Indo European, you know, it's a BHR. Similarly, for, you know, um, Latin TR, Greek TR, Sanskrit TR, Gothic THR, um, THR uh, we would um, 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 reconstruct, you know, um, pro to Indo -Euro European you know, TR here. And then, you know, the um, reverse of that is, you know, we can also um, postulate some, you know, um, some language change and pathways. So, you know, we can then say, that, you know, um, the proto language P becomes, you know, Latin P and Greek P, Sanskrit P, and, and interestingly, Gothic F. Okay, so, you know, we get Latin, Greek, and Sanskrit that are um, that sort of group um, together as P. Gothic, however, has evolved slightly in forming F. I mean, you know, there are many sort of, you know, um, um, phonetic similarities between P and F, you know, um, you know they, um, they, um, they are both, you know, um, um, a labial and plosives, etc. But, you know, the interesting here is, you know, so, you know um, 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 Germanic just seems to have gone off slightly with F. Um, Proto-Indo-European, -Indo you know, BH, I would think, so Latin fra, you know, Greek PH, you know, Sanskrit BH and Gothic B. And uh, lastly, you know, um, P-I-E-T becomes, you know, um, Latin T, Greek T, Sanskrit T, and interestingly, Gothic T-H. So, you know, Gothic seems to have um, um, diverted um, slightly in forming you know, these uh, fricatives like fur and thur, whereas you know, all the other languages have um, retained their um, consonantal um, value. Uh, this is um, a, um, a very um, famous law called, you know, Grimm's law and Werner's law. That's, uh, you know, Gothic, namely um, um, a Germanic have developed these uh, um, slightly different um, 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 types of um, consonants. All right, so this is you know um, a very simple um, illustration of some of the earliest um, attempts by Indo um, Europeanists in reconstructing, also in the detailing you um, um exchange in the nineteenth um, century. Oops, sorry, is everyone okay? I can hear some noise here. Everyone okay? I think we're good. We're good. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. Yeah. Don't worry, uh, I'll play whack-a-mole with the mute button. Thank you very much. Um, in the next um, century, so in the uh, 20th um, um, century, you know, many interesting things um, happen. I mean, the two world wars aside, some major figures have been um, developed, you know, on the scientific study of um, language. So, for example, Ferdinand um, de Sustur, who was a widely um, considered to be a the father of modern um, um, linguistics, you know, he was phenomenal. He published loads of, you know, papers and um, articles that uh, completely changed the uh, um, landscape of um, uh, linguistics. Um, he also worked on um, IE and, you know, and um, especially the um, 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 laryngeal um, theory, which was um, hugely um, influential. But you know, the uh, two developments, uh, the two um, um, developments that you know, I would like to point out here, whether you know, his distinction between you know, long and um, paho language and word, and also between the synchrony and diachrony. All right, um, synchrony and um, a diachrony, you can be seen in, um, um, in the um, um, 
previous slides, if you um, remember, you know, the sort of rules that I um, showed you, like, you know, um, um, Proto-Indo-European P becoming Latin P, um, Gothic F, etc. You know, those are diachronic um, laws, yeah, and those show how, um, you know, throughout the um, history, the original um, consonant becomes different types of consonants in different related um, languages. But that's just, you know, he um, influentially um, introduced, you know, there's also something called synchrony, so how language can be conceptualized as a system. So, you know, we're not just looking at uh, laws that occur through time, but also how the uh, entire system um, changes. And also between your long and um, Paho, which becomes influential and, in you know, he conceptualized um, how language, uh, you know, what language is long and how language is used in real life um, situations, um, Paho. Bloomfield uh, took the synchrony and um, diachrony um, distinction um, um, a bit further and you know, he um, tried to um, develop um, structuralism. So he, in, um, um, he um, published uh, several works in which um, he tried to develop this idea that your language is, um, is a synchronic um, system and how in studying um, linguistics, we're not just looking how particular things change, but how the whole system changes. So this is um, in line with uh, Saussure, but also with Kuhn's um, scientific um, revolution. And you know, Kuhn, um, he, uh, he also uh, tried to um, introduce, uh, you know, um, in any type of a scientific um, investigation, we're looking how the entire system changes rather than, you know, particular um, things um, that change. Greenberg, you know, he was interested in language um, um, a typology. And so, you know, he vastly expanded, you know, our knowledge of um, language by looking at the languages um, that were not um, IE based. And he was looking at um, the um, um, genetic um, 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 classification that you know that's similar to what we saw on the um, previous slide. On the previous slide, we could say the Gothic is a bit special. Gothic has veered off in being its own thing, and uh, you know um, Greenberg developed you know, those concepts um, a bit further in looking at them dialects, language and varieties, also language and genetics. La uh, Labov, who is still alive and active despite him being 93 um, years old now, you know, he, uh, he took, the, he took um, Saussure's um, Paho concept further and developed you know, social um, linguistics and language use. You know, he's an absolute giant um, in our field. And lastly, um, Chomsky, whom I've um, emphasized here because of his, uh, his work is, um, is, um, is going to feature prominently in this story. You know, he's, um, He's famous for very many um, reasons, but um, one of the things that he did was he introduced this cognitive um, revolution in um, linguistics. So yeah, he's tried to, uh, um, to um, urge us to think of language as a cognitive um, ability. All right, I think it's busy. right, if I just to show you something, yeah. Yeah, here is um, Chomsky. You probably, um, you may recognize him from the news if you uh, watch the uh, non-mainstream news like um, Democracy Now, um, 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 et cetera. You know, um, on the photo on uh, on the left, you know, you know I mean, um, you um, you see that you know, um, I I actually met um Chomsky at the LSA some um institute twenty um thirteen there, and uh, you know, um, I managed to you know um take a photo with him. Uh, you know, he's famous in uh, both um, politics and um academia because you know he's also he's um um fervent and proponent of the left wing um politics, and uh, he's a um, big critic of the um U.S. Um, international um, politics. And you know, there have been a numerous sort of, you know, um, works that uh, detail, you know, um, um, his um, his life and also his um, various works. And then you hear just a few um, references that uh, I highly recommend that everyone reads if uh, you're interested in the life of um, Chomsky. But here it is, and uh, you know, his uh, his work is um, highly um, um, influential um, in our field. Well, if I just see that, um, yeah, there are these things that are missing. Yeah. Oops, sorry there. Yeah, so Chomsky, I'm going to focus on Chomsky, the um, um, a linguist here. Um, people like Lightfoot and Epstein, however, you know, they've um, attributed um, Chomsky as the man whose revolution, um, who is um, responsible for the sort of cognitive um, revolution in um, linguistics. Um, he introduced uh, something called, you know, the universal um, grammar, uh, which is a biological um, component in language, which is a species um, specific. Um, he proposed that you know um, human language is um, is a species um, specific in that you know, no other species is capable of doing this what we're doing right now. So if you're reading or listening, i.e., you, I hope, and like if you're writing or speaking, 
as I'm doing now. No other species. You're not even our closest um, mam mammalian um, um, cousins, like apes and um, monkeys um, or orangutans can 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 do this, even though they are you know genetically closest to to us. And so you know there have been a various um, uh, postulations of uh, of um, of a particular um, genome. So um, 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 most recently, now there's a you know, Fox P2 gene, which is um, said to be you know, our, um, uh, which is said to um, um, determine our genetic um, makeup in terms of how we use language and how we process some um, language, etc. You know, Chomsky, Hauser, and Bob um, Berber, you know, they've written um, um, a very influential um, paper in which uh, they um, compare, you know, um, human language to, you know, the rest of the animal um, 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 a kingdom, and you know they come up with this um, distinction between the lactive, um, a language faculty in the broad sense and language faculty in the um, narrow sense. Um, language faculty in the um, in the broad sense um, includes everything. So you know um, includes our ears, all our senses, our um, auditory um, processing um, organs. You know our tongue, our mouth, how we speak, etc. Whereas language faculty in the um, narrow sense. Um, is uh, is more so um, um, a cognitive, and it deals mainly with grammar. So how our brain processes language, and how that gets um, externalized to the rest of our um, body, I suppose. Um, another um, very important uh, contribution that Chomsky made, you know, um, ever since you know um, some of his um, earliest works. So in the fifties, you know, he was already a big um, um, proponent of. Um, um, the scientific modeling of linguistic um, data. You know, he was trying to um, propose that you know it was possible to uh, model language with as much rigor as possible. And he was using your standard um, scientific um, concept, like you know, um, Occam's um, um, eraser, which says that you know, um, scientific um, um, modeling should be maximally um, simple. We should you know postulate as few um, so either technical um, devices as possible in order to account a particular you know, natural um, phenomenon. But uh, you know, this also brings us to something quite, uh, quite striking is, you know, um, Ma uh, you, uh, um, Roger um, um, Martin and you know, Uriah um, um, Gereke, you know, they've introduced something called you know, um, ontological um, minimalism and methodological um, 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 minimalism. You know, methodological um, minimalism is you know, more in line with the Occam's um, 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 razor and that you know we should you know um, try to account for data any form of natural data you know as simple as possible which is a standard um, scientific um, um, a procedure uh, whereas ontological uh, minimalism is that um, the object itself is maximally simple so not only do we seek to account for it you know, using as few um, sort of technical and devices as possible, we should also think of the actual thing as being as simple as possible. The actual thing here being language, and I knew this um, goes into the whole debate of um, 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 a minimalism, which is uh, you know um, what Chomsky has been um, arguing for in the past some um, twenty odd years. Right, so yeah, um, a point about you know bio um, linguistics. Okay, so we're now entering the second sort of in the part of my talk here. Yeah? Um, Lennonberg, he was, um, proposed in a very um, influential um, um, a volume that, you know, um, it was possible to think of language as a biological um, phenomenon. So he and Chomsky, you know, they have a similar take on, you know, on, on language being a bio biological um, 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 phenomenon. Noam, Noam Chomsky, he um, introduced the cognitive um, revolution. And so, you know, human language is being part of the uh, human um, anatomy. And a human, you know, is a species um, specific, as I said. So, you know, um, only we can do this. No, um, no other species can do this. And uh, if we think of it in terms of, um, all, uh, in terms of um, a traditional historical um, um, questions, like your language of variation and change, the way that, you know, for example, we um, reconstructed the you know, um, Proto-Indo-European and how we um, detailed the changes in Proto-Indo-European how that can be a sort of tied in when how, with how a biological um, a phenomenon, in which case we're thinking not just in terms of language data, but also as uh, um, but also language system. The fact that language is a biological system, and how we try to fit these two things in, 
which also ties in with um, Sussu's asynchrony and diachrony um, distinction. So if I just uh, yeah, so you know the bridge between you know the traditional style of historical um, linguistics and you know the more modern style of synchrony, where you know language is conceived as a cognitive biological um, phenomenon, and how these two can be um, brought together. And here we look at Lightfoot. Now Lightfoot, um, he has done some um, influential work on, you know, on first language um, acquisition, and you know. He also um, adopts this, um, this assumption that you know um, a UG pre-exists you know um, in you know a normal um, human brain um, from birth. Remember that we assume that in you know, a human language is species um, specific. Yeah, so it's genetically conditioned. All healthy human um, babies have this thing at birth, and this thing conditions you know, one's um, one's language ability you know for the rest of his or her life. And uh, you know he proposed you know, the very um, famous um, formula, um, a UG, which is the um, genetic um, component, the primary linguistic um, data, which is you know the language um, environment where you know the, where language is heard and used, language is processed, etc. You know these two things, if you put them um, together, you get the formation of grammar. So internal grammar is the uh, products or the um, results of these two things. So. Um, a UG um, has also been argued to consist of universal principles of uh, human um, language, like you know, the use of verbs, argument structure, case properties, grammatical um, relations, and uh, various um, phonetic um, relations. Oops, sorry. And uh, you know, the PLD consists of cues, um, language data, you know, what the infant sort of hears and perceives, and the product. The product you know, has been um, distinguished in terms of you know, um, I language and E language. So internal language, you know, IG is, um, is, uh, is one's linguistic um, competence, whereas external grammar, EG, um, is how language is uh, performed. So this also ties in with um, Susu's um, thing about um, long and um, paho, how language is known and how language is used. And uh, more um, recently, Chomsky, he's um, introduced uh, this idea of a general cognitive non-linguistic um, principles, which um, are also argued to condition, you know, human language and processing and human language um, acquisition. So Chomsky, you know, in, you know, um, in uh, some of his uh, you know, more recent um, um, papers, he proposed a this um, formula, which is um, quite similar, but uh, crucially, there is an addition of uh, what he called the third factor principles, i.e. some non-linguistic specific Co general cognitive um, principles, which also um, condition the formation of IG. We'll get to these, you know, um, in due course. Right. Uh, it was just a bit, uh, oops, sorry. Yeah. yeah so, you know, um, we've seen uh, several ways in which your, um, language data has been um, modeled and um, formalized. And this goes back to the fundamental question of uh, what linguistics is. Linguistics is a scientific study of um, language. But, you know, um, there are several ways, several different ways um, in which we can uh, model and analyze um, a language. We saw how the 19th century neo um, um, grammarians, you know, um, used the comparative um, method to reconstruct um, Proto Indo European and to trace the um, change between a proto language and, the, and, and all the um, very some um, um, uh, branches. Um, Cicerian and Bloomfieldian um, structuralism, Greenberg's typological um, universals, and then um, Chomsky. Um, Chomsky proposed something that was um, highly uh, influential, known as a transformational um, um, a grammar. Um, it's not the only um, theory that's available. I mean, there are also other, you know, um, very um, influential and popular um, theories like LFG, HPSG, um, construction grammar, um, etc. But uh, uh, I think if we can sort of, you know, uh, summarize and encapsulate the sort of Chomsky and um, a linguistic, is that, you know, um, it's, it's transformational. It consists of transformations. That's something that you know, I'll get to you know, um, in due course, but um, that's something that I, um, that I want to um, point out about um, Chomsky's work. If we um, go through Chomsky's, uh, well, his career, which is um, unique, he, um, he has uh, you know, a very powerful um, life, both in um, linguistics and in um, politics, but uh, let's focus on Chomsky, the um, linguist. 
you know, um, some of his um, earliest work when he was um, a graduate student at a uh, UPenn in the uh, 50s, you know, his, uh, his master's um, um, dissertation, but also um, a very big uh, manuscript in which he wrote uh, called, you know, the logical uh, structure of linguistic um, um, theory and also um, syntactic um, structures. I suppose you know, that's young um, Chomsky, but even then, you know, those works were already um, amazing and you know, they proposed uh, um, ideas and which are still being used um, today. The second phase in the 60s, um, he wrote um, aspects, so aspects of theory of a phrase um, structure in which um, he tried to uh, introduce um, transformations. In the um, 80s, in 1981, um, um, you know, um, a landmark volume known as you know, the Lectures um, on Government and um, Binding, based on, his, um, based on the lectures which he gave at um, Pisa. Uh, in which you know, one of my uh, supervisors, you know, Pino um, Longobardi, you know, was, um, was part of. Now that book is amazing. That book was a landmark um, um, volume in the um, in the history of um, um, linguistics because um, you know, that um, that's um, defined the uh, GB um, model. And but, you know, it was so um, influential. You know, there was um, a sequel. You know, uh, some concepts and consequences of um, GB that came out um, the year after, in which uh, he so you know um, he um, tied up some um, 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 loose ends and elaborates on on a few things. Um, the one thing about um, the, uh, the main thing about um, GB is that you know it consists of transformations. So we start with a deep structure, we transform it, and we get surface um, structure. Um, this is a major um, contribution that um, GB um, has made to the um, linguistic um, landscape. Uh, in the rest of the um, 80s, you know, he um, he developed new principles and parameters, which um, again became you know um, a very big thing. Um, in the 90s and the early um, thousands, he proposed um, minimalism. Okay, so yeah, a landmark um, volume um, in 1995 was the minimalist um, a program, which builds on some of his um, earlier works. So you know, um, his works in um, 1986, your knowledge of um, language barriers, and uh, his various uh, papers in 91, 92, and 93, they all lead up to to, um, to the minimalist um, um, a program published in 1995. And uh, you know, in the early um, um, thousands, uh, he proposed a minimalist um, inquiries and derivation by phase, etc. And you know, the, um, those also build on his 1995 book. Um, from 2004 onwards, all the way till till now, you know, he's uh, he's made some um, um, modifications to his um, early uh, minimalist um, um, model. So current uh, minimalism contains some. Um, um, some technical um, differences from his um, earliest uh, minimalist work, which I'll also um, get to um, in the main part um, of my talk. But this is, um, I suppose, a summary of Chomsky's um, academic um, career. I mean, uh, if I can do just um, a trillionth of this in, in, in my work, I'll be a happy man, seriously. This is an absolutely amazing and phenomenal um, publication um, record. All right, okay, so you know, um, back to this idea of um, transformations. Um, as I mentioned, I think your know, two slides um, um before is you know a, a transformation. You know, we start off with um deep structure and then we transform it in forming you know um surface um structures. So in between, we get a whole series of um, transformations. Uh, the deep structure is where you know um, where the thematic structure is formed by you know um um um, um principles of um. Um, um, a projection. And this, uh, you know, this largely uh, consists of argument structure and event um, structure. A surface structure is where uh, um, abstract and morphological case is um, is assigned, and also um, surface structure is where movement and agreement um, takes place. So you know we form the deep structure um, in terms of merge, etc., and then we move and agree things, and then we um, we we put them in a different um, order via these uh, mechanisms. Um, derivation transformation then leads to spell out. A spell out occurs at SS. So once we've done all the uh, transformations, we spell them out. So we get a rule based on um, transformation, which is a top down um, derivation. And then we, uh, we get the um, final bits where we spell out um, the um, language um, structure, and here, so Chomsky says, you know, um, there are two, um, there are two main um, components: a phonetic form (PF) and um, and logical form um, (LF). It's where syntax meets sound and meaning, respectively. So, if I just show this um, schematically, the architecture 
of um, you know Chomsky style um, transformational um, um, grammar is commonly and popularly so um, 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 schematized like this. We start with deep structure, it undergoes some transformations, and then you know at spell out it then becomes pf and lf. Okay, so syntax then becomes sound and meaning, etc. Um, in modern, I mean, more recent um, um, minimalism, however, so DS become an SS, i.e. the uh, traditional uh, transformations have been um, remodeled as sort of phase by phase and derivation. And also um, PF has been um, re-termed as FON, is where the um, articulatory perceptual um, factors um, occur. And you know, um, LF has been um, relabeled SEM, which is the uh, conceptual and in intentional um, component. So here is um, you know, the um, model um, that the people have often used to um, conceptualize some Chomsky style uh, transformational um, grammar. But right, also you know, another thing is a functional um, categories. Yes, in both the principles and parameters and minimalist um, program, which is you know, the current um, model in the functional categories are paramount, okay? Um, traditional grammatical um, properties um, are given some sort of structural um, representation now this is quite um, controversial. You know, if we um, in, um, at, um, at the bottom of the um, slide, I've written that you know um, not everyone um, agrees about some um, functional um, categories. Um, you know the um, the other um, models that I've uh, mentioned, like LFG, um, 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 HPSG, those models over take um, the grammatical properties um, to be um, not structurally represented, but represented elsewhere. So, you know, if you use those non Chomskyan um, models, you wouldn't be following these principles. But, you know, um, it will be, um, you know, well over, you know, the scope of this particular talk to compare different uh, grammatical uh, models. So I think I'll just stick with um, Chomsky. And in Chomsky uh, um, grammar, you know, functional um, categories are extremely um, prominent. And then you, um, there's a quote here, you know, given by um, um, Uhala, you know, who wrote a fantastic um, um, PhD on dissertation at a UCL? You know, he, so citing um, Chomsky, says in the functional categories constitute grammar. So in Chomskyan um, syntax, you know, grammar equals functional um, categories. And the traditional, you know, um, grammatical um, properties like um, tense or aspect, mood of the verb, or the definite this specificity, number and gender of noun or the clause and focus and topic of the clause, all of these things are represented in syntax. So, you know, that's um, one particular thing that we shall have to um, deal with um, later on. And also one thing about the functional um, categories is that, you know, functional categories have now been uh, cartographically um, projected. So not only do we get all of these things in syntax where they are um, projected, they also um, 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 are projected in a particular way. That's the um, cartography that your people um, that people have been uh, working on and still are. Um, if I just you know, um, show you a very um, simple and um, a very um, classic um, illustration, it's the English and passivization, which Chomsky used. Um, um, in detail in this 1981, so with the um, lectures on government and, um, and binding work. Um, passivization. Uh, we start from the active um, sentence, so the professor praise the a student. The way we passivize it, I mean, uh, even though, you know, for native English speakers, we don't really um, think about it that much, but this actually is a multi-step um, transformation. We would delete the subject um, deletion, something known as the um, Buzio and um, generalization, which I won't um, get into now, but you know, we would delete the uh, subject and then we would um, raise the object to the uh, subject um, position. And this requires the uh, copula, you know, the um, verb to be as well. So we would delete the, uh, the, the, the subject and get them so we, um, uh, um, sort of an empty subject, praise the uh, student, which is clearly um, un ungrammatical. We would then need to raise the object and get you know, the student was praised. And the original um, subject may be optionally used as an adjunct. So, so the student was praised by the professor. Um, this is a very simple, but you know, a very classic illustration of transformations. It's a multi-step um, process. Right, okay, um, parameters and uh, in principles and um, um, parameters. Um, as Greenberg has shown that you know, um, there is a huge amount of linguistic um, variation 
uh, which consists of language and universals as well and, and as well as the language and differences. The fact you know this um, goes, this this goes um, further back than um, um Greenberg because if, um, if you think back to the um, Indo European um, illustration that I um, um showed you there we we already saw you know some similarities as well as some differences between some cognate um languages uh, Latin Greek Sanskrit and Gothic we try to reconstruct the uh, proto parent form by looking at their um sim similarities. But you know, there are also some differences, like how Gothic has, you know, has um, fricatized you know, the uh, consonants, um, etc. So, you know, um, language universals and differences are fundamental to any type of a linguistic um, inquiry, really. And, uh, you know, we saw, you know, from the historical and comparative um, angle, how that, um, how, how that works. Parameters are um, seen as switches. Uh, you know, some famous um, switches are, you know, um, um, for example, you know, um, um, the null subjects um, um, parameter that um, Cinque that, that uh, Rizzi um, 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 looks at. For those who speak um, Italian, uh, you will know that you know, the subject isn't obligatory in Italian versus English, but the subject is obligatory, apart from some highly uh, colloquial um, um, registers. And so you know, that, so you know people like um, Rizzi says you know um, you would switch between Italian and English, where you would um, go from a null subject language to a non-null subject um, language. Word order, similarly, people like you, Travis, you have your head initial language and the head final um, languages. So Travis was in a VO and OV. For example, in English, you would get verb before the object, yeah? I, so it, um, the professor praised the student, praised the student. Whereas, you know, um, in language like um, Japanese, you would get OV, the, um, the object would come before um, the V. Oops, let me get it down. Um, and parameters are now, so, you know, I'm con um, I'm conceptualized to be encoded in the, the functional um, categories. Um, a very big project as, um, um, led by uh, Professor Ian um, um, Roberts and um, his various um, colleagues at the um, um, at the University of um, um, Cambridge, so, you know, um, has dealt with this um, perennial issue in, in great um, detail. And you know, to look at you know, how uh, parameters, how formal um, parameters are you know, um, encoded between um, um, languages, and you know, I highly recommend that you um, um, look at those if you're interested. But uh, now, you know, functional categories are argued to be where language variation is encoded. A function uh, are also um, um, a syntactic, and then you know, they are subject to syntactic operations like merge and move and agree, etc. Um, parameters, you know, parametric um, um, variation, and um, therefore, you know, it lies in how functional categories are syntactically realized. As I explained, you know, Chomsky syntax differs from other things like uh, LFG, HBSG, you know, um, in that you know, everything is projected, even traditional grammatical um, properties that one may not think um, are um, um, projected, like verbs or like nouns are, but, you know, in Chomsky style syntax, you know, and that's exactly, you know, um, 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 everything is, um, is projected. Okay, so you, know, you get a functional um, categories. Okay, if I just you know, move on a little bit, oops. Right. Um, yeah, so you know, our Miller's programs. Yeah, um, I've mentioned uh, when I was uh, talking about you know um, Chomsky's um um a um, career, how you know his ideas are constantly um changing, and you know um I mentioned about early uh, minimalism, new a uh, new uh, minimalism, but also you know uh, the most recent style of um 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 um, 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 um minimalism. Um, the core of the um, debate is got you know, what is simplicity and how do we define um. Um, simplicity. Uh, simplicity has been defined in uh, different ways. So for example, in, in early um, minimalism, from Chomsky in 1995 um, and into the early um, thousands, etc., you know, there he was saying that you know, movement is more complex than merge. In 2004, you know, Chomsky introduced something called the internal merge versus an external merge. So internal merge um, uh, it's, it, um, it's equivalent to the old um, movement, and there he says that you know these um, these two types of merge are equivalent, and they, you know, they are um, the same. You know, neither one is um, is more complex than the other. 
uh, in more recent, um, well, I'm very, I'm, I'm, I'm a recent, so, you know, I'm worked by um, 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 a Chomsky, and he introduced some, some new principles, like um, the principles of um, um, projection, and also he's a new, so, you know, um, simplicity um, principles, like a minimized um, computation, as well as, as uh, minimal search, etc. So you know the so you know throughout this whole uh, minimalist um, project, you know the uh, core of um, the the um, the uh, core question is you know how do we define um, simplicity? Right. So if we look at you know this um, this tree in early uh, minimalism, you know emerge is simpler than move and agree because you know um there Chomsky in um, two thousand um argues that you know merge consists of second merge. So you know you would start off with why. For um, 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 for example, you would you would merge y where um where its base um um generated. You would then move it to a higher place called x, for example. So you, so you know I um, mean you would you would merge it to um to a second place. This is known as um second merge. Nowadays, however, I think this has been um abandoned in the you know um um. Um, y would be argued to be externally merged in Y, but then internally merged in X, and you're neither is more complex than than the other. But uh, you know, within a transformational um, grammar, one could still say that in you know, the movement or internal merge presupposes um, external merge because in derivational grammar, movement applies after um, merge. Oh, sorry, I'm um, yes, yeah, so I'm I'm just type with move applies after merge. So you know, you would form the deep structure first before you can move it. I mean, again, you know, that's a quite some common commonsensical. You can only move something that's already there, and you, so you would have to merge it first before you can do things with it. So you know, um, internal merge is still logically and temporally sequentially dependent on external merge in this um, form of grammar. So you know, um, one this, uh, this leads me to the question um, as to whether you know, um, internal merge or movement is it um, superfluous? Superfluous, so not in the sense that you know, um, it cannot occur, but in the sense that you, know, it's an extra step. Um, you know that uh, we may be able to uh, do uh, do away with um, if we can. Now, people who are working in the formal um, um, formal um, um, parametric um, linguistics, I mean, um, for example, you know, Professor Ian um, Roberts, you know, he's um, proposed um, on empirical grounds that you know, um, there's a hierarchy that we can follow. Um, is that, you know, we would start off on um, that's uh, you know a um, um, movement of a phrase is more complex than movement overhead, and movement overhead is more complex than agreement. Agreement is finally more complex than merge, and merge um, can eventually be eliminated. So um, we get nothing. So according to this Klein, you know movement is clearly more complex than agree, and agree more complex than merge. And in his 2007 book, you know, he details this um, typology of syntactic change. Um, the formation of F merge, i.e. the formation of functional um, elements, otherwise known as grammatical um, elements, is a very famous process known as a grammaticalization. And there, you know, there is copious, and there is plenty of evidence um, that um, supports this. Whereas um, the, the change from movement to agree largely ties in with um, the word oil change. So how in languages, how there used to be um, an overt movement, but how that movement can be lost, and we seem to get agreement, and we get um, the results of there being word order change. Um, according to this um, simplicity, uh, we would say that um, um, early movement is more complex than, uh, than agree, which is in turn more complex than merge, which uh, comes back to the question of whether you know mo our movement is superfluous or not. Well, I think um, I'll probably I'll, I'll come to an end to my survey. So you know, um, according to these um, these works that have dealt with you know um, simplicity in formal um, um, syntax, this Klein I believe still holds that the movement is more complex than agree, but it's more complex than merge, and merge can eventually be eliminated um, to get nothing. So you know, this early and minimalism definition of simplicity that merge is more complex than agree and move still holds in the sense that merge is a single step. Um, derivational um, mechanism, movement and movement involves at least two um, positions. So you will need to form two positions before you can do agreement and movement, etc. And so, in this sense, movement and agreement, by extension, are superfluous. We can do without them if we can. And uh, I think this is um, an
important a conclusion to make in I'm in this I'm syntax. Right, okay, if I if I just uh, say a big thank you to all of you for attending you this webinar and do please um, get in touch um, on everything, both on this um, presentation and anything else. Thank you very much.